God doesn't come right out and say, or tell us what the shape of the earth is in the Bible. He's left clues, it's a puzzle, it's a jigsaw puzzle. And some people try and ignore uh, you know, some of the pieces and, or they try and fit pieces and, and they're real fitting, but you know, if you're a true tree seeker, you want to put all the pieces together. Everybody knows the famous Isaiah 40, 22 verse, which says he sits upon the circle of the earth. It uses the same Hebrew word as, as Proverbs 8, 27. It's the, exactly the same Hebrew word. So if you're going to accept one is circle, you definitely need to accept the other is circle. Although the King James translators use a different English word, the actual Hebrew word, as we can see from the Strong's Concordance, is the same. It's chug. And I don't think anybody has a problem with that. You know, the people that have a problem are people that think a circle means a sphere or a ball or a globe. And the Bible never ever describes the earth as such. It never says it's moving or rotating, spinning, flying through space. And the important point about that verse is he sits upon the circle of the earth and sees the inhabitants as grasshoppers. So where is he? Because NASA don't seem to have found him. You know, if you've got this idea that he's all the way across the universe, billions of light years away across galaxy after galaxy, but he can still sit upon the circle of the earth and see the inhabitants as grasshoppers, it doesn't make sense. What does make sense is the biblical description of the three heavens, where, you know, God's in his throne in the third heaven. And he can quite easily look under heaven and see to the ends of the earth. It makes sense. All scripture makes sense when you get rid of the modern cosmology, the Copernican heliocentrism. And right away in Genesis 1, the sun, moon and stars are created on the same day. And again, that's in direct contradiction with what modern scientism tells us. So are you going to say, you know, are you going to take the Bible as truth or are you going to say, you know, modern man knows better than, than God? If you know about DNA, and you still believe in evolution, well, you're holding two contradictory concepts there. Nobody would ever say a book authored itself. And DNA is the very complex code for all life. Are you really saying the code doesn't have a coder? And back to our biblical flat earth puzzle. We've got the two circle verses. But we've also got two verses that tell us the earth has four corners and God doesn't use throwaway verses, throwaway phrases like men do. You can't make them figurative, otherwise we can make circle figurative. Like you can say what God really meant to say was, but that's reading the Bible Gnostically. I'll take the words exactly as they are. Now many understandably put the square outside of the circle. They'll include all four verses and say, okay, well, you know, there we are. But you can't leave it there because now you've got a problem with Proverbs 8.27 again. Now you've got God inscribing a square on the face of the deep. And also there's no way to gather people from the four corners if the, the circumference of the circle is the barrier, is the edge. It doesn't solve all the pieces of the puzzle. It's a bad fit. It's fitting a, a, round, a round hole, a round peg into a square hole. It means what he says. You can't call it for something else. And please don't say circles have corners. And the Orlando Ferguson picture that we get all the time with, with the four angels standing in the corners, it's the same thing. But not only that, <laughs> you've got the sun and the moon on, on wires and, and it's not even a flat earth. No, if you wanna if you wanna solve the puzzle properly and make sure all the pieces fit perfectly together. We need to take the square and put it inside the circle. No matter what other questions that raises, scripture has to be correct. It's, it's, it's the benchmark, it's the foundation. And now this matches all of scripture. Now God can look down and sit upon the circle of the earth and he's inscribed a circle on the face of the depth and he's got four corners to the earth where people can be gathered from and where angels can stand. And it's not the only scripture. I mean, all buildings that God commands to be built are always four square. They're always four sided in corners. They, they always face the four directions, the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. He never, he never instructs anybody to build a circular building with a dome. It's never happened. I mean, it's not, you know, direct proof, but it's, it would be inconsistent. 
take Ecclesiastes 1.5 and Psalm 19.4-6 to give us a picture, not of a sun circling round and round, that's not what the language says at all. It says it rises in one part of heaven and, you know, sets in another and it hastens back to where it arose. That's not circling round and round, otherwise it would just say the sun was circling round and round every day. It's describing this. It's describing the sun going across the earth and giving light and dark where it's not. And it's a continuous circuit. But it's not just scripture. There are, there are plenty of observable proofs that prove the circle model is, is a wrong model of flat earth. There's no way for the model to um, produce the daylight hours that are, are real. I mean, millions of people live in these southern cities. We can show examples of that with animations and show how it's how it's impossible to, you know, for for it to reflect reality. You set the you set the sun's reach, so we can't reach Antarctica, but it's it's just giving the Arctic 24-hour light, as we know it does in the June summer. Then we, we look at what the reach is. We look at how many daylight hours is that sun giving. And up north it's giving, you know, plenty. It's giving, you know, 12, 12 to 14. But down south, I mean, you can pause it anywhere and you can see that along those latitudes where the cities are, it's only giving five or six hours of daylight. Then it's going dark again. But they receive 10 hours of daylight on June the 21st or more. This model can't give the reality a model must match reality. I mean, it's a basic fail of the of the Gleason's disc model, and it's it's a common sense, commonly known. Uh, you know, daylight hours can't be faked. The number of daylight hours can't be faked. So you could set the you could set the sun's reach so you know it's now a lot bigger. Now it now it will give ten hours of, of daylight um, to those places where where they actually receive it. But on the flip side, you know, if you look in the north now, everywhere within the Tropic of, of Cancer really is getting 24 hour light, which again, we know is not reality. It's inherently flawed because of the time zones. An hour up in Canada is worth 20 minutes down south and you're done. So, the, the, you know, the sun's reach needs to be three times, three times further down south. It doesn't make sense. And then we have the, you know, the equidistant, equidistant solstices, six months apart, north and south. Here's, here's, two, here's two pairs of examples. Again, pause, check it out for yourself. Go check some other places. Do your own research. But this is truth. And some people do, do recognise that there's a problem with the with you know the daylight hours on the disc model so we get animations like this and clearly what what is the sun doing what is the what is that sun doing it is, you've got a dark patch and then a light patch behind it and then it, and then and then it goes to an egg shape in the in the june in the june solstice and people will look at it and go oh right well, that's how it works because it is actually giving the right the right daylight hours there believe it or not it is now giving plenty of plenty of sunshine to, to south and, and obviously the Antarctic 24 hour daylight. And it's, it's all to do with simply the way they've created this, this animation. It's the rectangular Mercator map. You can see it's the same graphics from, from timeanddate.com. And they put it through a polar coordinate filter and sequenced it so it's animated. And that will satisfy some people. So, ah, well, that's how it works. Watch that. The sun can't light up, you know, the North Pole there, but it can light up places much, much further. It's nonsense. The 24 hour uh, Arctic sun is fascinating. Now people say this is the sun circling round, but I, that's not what I see at all. I see the sun, you know, arcing exactly as it does further south. So it's not going below the horizon and then coming up in, in a different place. And it should give us clues as to the, you know, as to the nature of, what, of, of how everything works. 
the fact that the sun is far bigger and early selling than it is on the horizon shows that it's passing by. We could be seeing, you know, the, the doors of our world in action. There's certainly some keys and clues here in this motion. But what it's not doing, you know, for sure, is it's simply circling around above the Tropic of Cancer. It certainly disproves we're on some kind of spinning ball as well, because we, obviously the landscape wouldn't have to pan like that. I mean, the sun's moving. It shows the sun's moving and not the Earth. I, I think a lot of the problem is the way they've wedded this model to the amazing true realisation that we're not on a spinning ball in outer space. That NASA are lying, we've all been deceived. Most, most people still are deceived, they think we're crazy. But because they've, they've you know, inserted this model in there as well, unfortunately not more people come to it. It puts people off. And if you want to wake people up to the flat earth, it's, it's time to get to grips with reality and find, you know, choose better models. Because even if you say, you know, 24 hour daylight in Antarctica doesn't exist, which it does, thousands of people have been there and seen it, experienced it, reported it, videos. But even if you want to say, you know, 24 hour, how many hours daylight can this model produce if the sun's circling around there? There it is on the Tropic of Capricorn. Can it produce 12 hours of daylight even? Where those cities are, there's no way to produce 14 hours. It's again produced about seven. But you can't make the light any bigger, otherwise it would stop giving the Arctic its, it's 24-hour night. I mean, the daylight hours again is something observational. It's something you can, you know, you can really research for yourself and easily check out. And you know, with the, with the internet, you can you can find people flat earthers in Australia and New Zealand and South Africa, South America. There's plenty of international groups. Do are these daylight hours correct for you? Every single video of the Antarctic shows just very little night. There's, you know, however many hours, if you don't, even if you don't believe there's 24 hour day, daylight in Antarctica in December, how many hours do you believe there is and how many hours is, this, is the circle model capable of producing? It's funny because flat earthers always accuse ball earthers of, you know, denying, denying facts and denying reality in order to, you know, cling on to their model. But they don't, they don't see the irony in the fact that they're doing that themselves with a circle model. I mean, the Earth is flat and stationary, but it doesn't... It's not a circle. It, that doesn't work, and, and the two don't need to be the same. The two don't need to be welded together forever. Unfortunately, it's what makes flat Earthers look like it, look like the victims of a, of a psychological operation. I mean, you know, we know the big psyop is on the ball believers. It's on those who believe there's an outer space and NASA are going on all these missions. And... You know, eventually visitors are going to come and, and save us. That's what the Flat Earth Realisation is all about. So we want far more people to wake up to it. That's what, that's what every Flat Earther wants. They want all their families and friends to realise that they've been lighter and the Earth is stationary. It's still as exactly as they see it. And the stars are, are just, you know, the, the lights in the sky. All the heavens are, are lights for the Earth. The Earth is, the Earth is it. But, the, but what they'll do is then ask, how does day, day and night work? Where's the edge? Why does nobody fall off? All these questions. And they, are, they need answering. You can't run away from them. It's like, ah, but, you know, NASA are lying. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But how, how does the world work? That, you know, what, what, what we actually observe from Earth? And if your model can't explain it, if it falls down just on daylight hours, which is such, a, is such an easily observable thing all over the world and easily, you know, easily communicated, then people won't go any further and they're going to they're stay on the ball because the ball explains day and night. I mean, okay, you know, they need, they need the magic of gravity and everything else to, to, to back it up. And all these, all, 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 all the mind, mind control tricks that we know because we, we were under it. So there's only one thing to do, and that's to get rid of the circle model. The flat square model can explain daylight hours no problem at all, and seasons, and Antarctic, and Arctic 24 hour daylight. It's completely biblical and scriptural, and it's completely observational. Here's the sun's reach as it goes through the seasons and the year. Obviously, it's where it is at 12 o'clock GMT. As that goes along, the Antarctica is never going to receive night. Most of the world is. But everywhere, you know, the extreme north and south there, the north's getting dark. 
It's also only getting dark. And it shows the reach of the sun changing as it goes through the air as it moves from tropic, tropic to tropic. But now Antarctica is going to get the 24 hour night and Arctic will get its 24 hour daylight. And here, here's it daily going along, so that's how you get day and night. It's a simple explanation. Because the Earth is made equal, it's, it's, it's of two halves. And another huge, I mean, this, 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 this would be my first point of research. Everywhere on Earth receives 12 hours of, of, light, of daylight on the equinox. Check that's correct. And see if there's any way to make that happen on the circle model. Because of the way the time zones work on the circular model, and, the, and you just get bigger and bigger as you go further south, there's no way for that to produce 12 hour, a 12-hour day everywhere on one day. It's impossible. And then you have the speed of the moon. It's, all, it's also observable. It's easily observable. The, the moon moves between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn over the month. It takes a month to do what the sun takes a year to do. And on the, you know, on the, circle, on the circle model, the Tropic of Cancer is a lot smaller. You put, the, you put them side by side and the Tropic of Capricorn is, is 1.7 times bigger. So the moon, the moon must have to speed up and slow down by, set by around 70% each month. And that should be easily observable. And we can test that. We can, we, can, we can test it. You can see, first of all, does, you know, just general observed astronomy, how, how much does the speed of the moon change? But you can do your own experiments. We've got a good friend David Marsh. On his channel, you can see the full version of this uh, moon race experiment. And what you would expect to see is the Tropic of Capricorn moon being far faster than the other two. Equator being faster than Cancer, but Tropic of Capricorn being, being you know, faster than both of them. And the results actually show the equator is the fastest moon. The moon goes, goes fastest across the sky when it's over the equator during the month. And not when it's over Capricorn at all. Capricorn is even a little bit slower than Cancer, but I would imagine that's due to perspective. It's completely not what you'd expect. It's a solid observable proof that we're not in this radial circle model. And then you have um, non-stop direct flights across the south from you know from large cities and people say well you know they don't exist or you can't book them but you've been told that people have taken them flat earthers have taken them <laughs> and people have videoed it so again it's denying you know reality airline airlines don't make up certain you know certain these flights people really do want to go from sydney to johannesburg and and you know and do it quickly and the reason why you'll deny that they, they exist is because it proves again that the distances, distances on this model just won't work. They will not work. So all we have to do just to prove it is, you know, there's 24,000 miles in the disk model. Um, every line of latitude is 1,000 miles. So it's 12,000 to the center from the edge to, to the North Pole uh, center. It's 12,000 miles. That's what we want to remember. So if we draw them out, and you know, sorry if I'm a you know a few a few a few hundred miles out here, here or there, but it's not going to make any difference because, you know, if we put this over the centre, you've got twelve thousand to the centre plus another two is fourteen thousand miles, and this flight only takes eleven hours. So at six hundred miles an hour or less, it's going to take over twenty three hours. I mean, you know, commercial planes fly at five fifty five sixty miles an hour, so they're not over six hundred. Now people want to go from Australia to South Africa, fully enough. This flight exists and it takes 14 hours. And again, if we move the line and check the distance from, from the edge, it's 12,000 plus 2, it's 14,000 again. It takes 14 hours. So either the airplane flies at 1,000 miles an hour, which we know they don't, but again, you can check on the aircraft that it uses. Or it needs to take 23 hours, which it doesn't do. I mean, the times are, are so out, I mean, if it was an hour or two out, then, you know, you can say, well, you know, I'm only using PowerPoint to, to measure these distances, really. You know, it's only a rough guide. But the 200% out. So clearly we can see why, why people will insist that these flights don't exist, that they're fake and you can't get on them, even though, you know, there, there are forums all, all over the internet where you can, you can see people reviewing them and, and what have you. Um, I think Max Egan took this one twice. 
you know, confirming that it's a, a sub-13 hour flight. But again, on the, on, the, on the official flat earth model, on the disc, big disc model that everybody promotes, th this flight's 15, it's over 15,000 miles distance. It would take over 25 hours in a regular commercial airplane. This proves the distances on the, on the model are wrong. This proves the whole model is wrong. Now don't get me wrong, Earth is flat. It's not a globe. It's not a rotating ball, as they've told us in outer space. And one of the best ways to prove it is the lack of curvature. We can see buildings and mountains and what have you, miles and miles in the distance. People say, well, the curve's hiding the bottom of them. We say, well, where's the curve? Where's the corresponding curve going across? Do you live on a cylinder? But this particular model of flat Earth is wrong. It, we've been sold a lie, again, fully enough. We've wedded the realisation that we're not in outer space and the Earth's not a big rotating giant ball to this, another false model. And it stops more people waking up to the, the first fact. It stops it because they will look at the alternative model and go, no, sorry, that's not it. So it, it does stop the flat Earth awakening, which is why it's important. And with the, the 4D model, I know people have a problem, you know, are, are, you, te are you kind of, kind of teleporting from one side to the other? No. I mean, when you're looking at that, that's, we're looking at it from kind of God's perspective, from 4D. We're seeing the doors in action. As far as we're concerned, you know, it's a continuous strip. The Pac-Man analogy is, is perfect because we know, and it's a great way to explain it, we know, we know Pac-Man is... is He's fixed in his, his world, but he doesn't. When he goes, when he goes through the doors, he, he doesn't know he's going from side to side, he's not teleported, neither do planes or ships. But they are going from side to side. But as God says in scripture, he shut up the sea with doors, a door you can go through two ways. You can keep going through it as much as you like, unless it's locked. Well, they're not locked. He gave the sea his decree, he didn't bound it with a wall or a barrier or you know anything physical or the south. I mean, if you're in a, in a plane or a boat going from America to Japan or, or wherever, east-west, east, you, you know, there's no teleport, there's nothing strange going on with you, it's just in the nature of the earth space itself. It's continuous, I mean, that's why there's no edge. And it's also how they've, you know, managed to convince everybody that they're, they're on a continuous ball because you can keep going and come back to the start. But there's always more than one explanation for everything. That's also why if somebody's determined never to ever uh, reject the, the spinning ball, the spinning bail, then you'll never convince them because there's always two explanations. As far as, as far as, you know, Pac-Man's concerned, he's, he's in, a, he's in a, a forever world. He can keep going left and right forever. And come back, well, and kind of come back to where he started, and it's the same for us. You've got to kind of hold the thing in, in two, from two different perspectives at once. So the 3D where where we are, and you just be, you know, you be keeping on going. But if you look at it from above, you would actually be going from one side to the other. But it's a seamless door, and like I say, it's God. It should be supernatural. The sun and the moon and the stars aren't hanging on wires in the in the sky. They're not project, being projected from the ground like a Batman symbol. You know, it's all supernatural. Life is supernatural. I don't understand why, why science can't be the discovery of God's world, God's creation, God's amazing work. You know, the intricacies of DNA and life systems and, you know, how indeed the, the sun and the moon do work. But the earth is, is it's fixed, it's flat, it's on pillars. It has a firmament where all the all the lights are. The lights, are to, you know, the lights are to give light upon the earth. Either you believe the Bible is the word of God, or you don't. I mean, even if, I suppose even if you're a non-believer, the observable proofs that the, the you know the disc doesn't work should be enough. But if we keep within the parameters of the Bible, there's there's four different shapes it can be: square, rectangle, parallelogram, rhombus. And you know, one of loads of different projections. There's loads of different square projections. There's loads of different ones for each. Well, a few different ones anyway. Mercator and the central sun and you call them the atoms. <laughs> like I say, there's always going to be there's always going to be continuous 
east-west travel. There's no edge to the earth. There's only one of it, but it's shut up with doors. So as far as you're concerned, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going forever. Never ending plane, that's what it is. The rectangular Mercator is whatever it is used to, and it matches scripture where you know God's temples and tabernacles are twice as long as they are as they are wide and it can be a range of a range of projections and like I say the prime meridian can be anywhere it might be through London but it might be through America or it might be through Giza or Jerusalem or maybe where the international dateline is for all we know and it doesn't matter because as we say it's the, it's the earth it's the space itself it's a continuous strip uh, nothing special happens to us. We're not teleporting from one side to the other. It's space itself that's doing the, you know, the, the weird magical thing, if you like. And I like the the these two because the the equator line is is the longest line. It's longer than the tropics line, which would explain the speed of the moon. This particular one has distorted land masses. And somebody needs to do one with, you know, more maybe a more accurate land masses. But it fits together nicely again. It's quite easy to see how east-west travel will work. I think with the rhombus, you've got more chance of, of getting the, the land masses in. Um, I mean, we, again, we don't know the exact shape of the land masses, but you've got the equator line as the longest line. Um, north, south, east, west work exactly as you expect them to. And then also, you know, if you're stargazing in, in South America or Australia, you look you look south, you're going to see the same similar similar sky, similar constellations, and that's <laughs> completely opposite to the to the circle where where they're on they're facing opposite. If they they look south, they're facing opposite ends of the sky. But the truth is that they do see the same constellations. We can look at the heavens, we can look at the earth, and and they both say flat square. They both say this four dimensional continuous loop. I mean, the Bible says that. It says it with its descriptions of the sun. It says it with it, you know, with the doors. See the sea shut up with doors. What else can that mean? And his decree, he's given a supernatural decree. And then, you know, it's got four corners. The four, the four angels can stand on the north, south, east, and west and hold those wings. And the sun, you know, the sun takes its planetary system, its renegade planetary system, to fool us and to believe there's a solar system. But I've explained that on the flat Earth astronomy video. So, you know, I, I don't understand why more, more, more flat earthers aren't, aren't looking into it, aren't questioning the circle model the same as we did the ball model. And, you know, seeing that we've got far better, a far better model that explains far more observational realities and matches scripture perfectly. I don't understand why more people aren't on it, but hopefully they will do. Hopefully they will do in the future. It makes sense. All scripture makes sense when you get rid of the modern cosmology, the Copernican heliocentrism. And right away in Genesis 1, sun, moon and stars are created on the same day. And again, that's in direct contradiction with what modern scientism tells us. So are you going to say, you know, are you going to take the Bible as truth or are you going to say, you know, modern man knows better than, than God? If you know about DNA, God doesn't come right out and say, or tell us what the shape of the earth is in the Bible. He's left clues, it's a puzzle, it's a jigsaw puzzle. 
And some people try and ignore, uh, you know, some of the pieces and, or they try and fit pieces and, and they're real fitting. But, you know, if you're a true truth seeker, you want to put all the pieces together. Everybody knows the famous Isaiah 40, 22 verse, which says he sits upon the circle of the earth. It uses the same Hebrew word as, as Proverbs 8, 27. It's the, exactly the same Hebrew word. So if you're going to accept one is circle, you definitely need to accept the other is circle. Although the King James translators use a different English word, the actual Hebrew word, as we can see from the Strong's Concordance, is the same. It's chug. And I don't think anybody has a problem with that. You know, the people that have a problem are people that think a circle means a sphere or a ball or a globe. And the Bible never ever describes the earth as such. It never says it's moving or rotating, spinning, flying through space. And you still believe in evolution? Well, you're holding two contradictory concepts there. Nobody would ever say a book authored itself. And DNA is the very complex code for all life. Are you really saying the code doesn't have a coder? back to our biblical flat earth puzzle we've got the two circle verses but we've also got two verses that tell us the earth has four corners and God doesn't use throwaway verses throwaway phrases like men do you can't mix and the important point about that verse is he sits upon the circle of the earth and sees the inhabitants as grasshoppers so where is it because NASA don't seem to have found him you know, if you've got this idea that he's all the way across the universe, billions of light years away across galaxy after galaxy, but he can still sit upon the circle of the earth and see the inhabitants as grasshoppers, it doesn't make sense. What does make sense is the biblical description of the three heavens, where, you know, God's in his throne in the third heaven, and he can quite easily look under heaven and see to the ends of the earth. 